Good morning, folks. My name, Max Whitman, coming at you live on, what's today's date even? 9-6, September 6, 2019. Little peg in the rejected, as always, to segue us in here today. It's about, uh, about 10, 15 a.m. on the East Coast of the United States at recording time. Probably about noon by the time this goes up. So, if you're joining me on your lunch, thanks for stopping by. Uh, as always, it's a pleasure to sit down with you and uh, and play a little TEW. Talk a little wrestling. Um, maybe talk a little AEW. Um, let's get this music off. Go away, Peg and the Rejected. Uh, so maybe talk a little bit of... Maybe talk a little AEW. Probably not, though. And... Uh, and, uh, and, and move into our, our North of the Border Pro Wrestling Safe. What I have today uh, is, as we talked about last week, uh, and actually I, I was hoping to get a couple episodes up at this point. Didn't happen that way. Um, and uh, again, this next week will probably only be a one-episode kind of thing again. Um, kind of slowly getting into this. Got a busy work week coming up. I got uh, three doubles. Uh, three doubles, so... Uh, uh, Wednesday might be the only day that I can get something up uh, next week. So look for an episode Wednesday. Uh, that'll likely be the one episode we do next week. Uh, hopefully, uh, if I have time on Wednesday or, or, or in my downtime, I can record a couple episodes and maybe get a few up regardless. Uh, but probably just going to be doing one episode a week, uh, at least for the next week and a half, two weeks or so. Uh, but that being said, what I do have today uh, is going to be a little bit of a let's learn uh, on character development. We've already done a Let's Learn on character development. Uh, if, you, um, if you had followed that, if you've been following the channel for a while, you've probably seen that already. Um, but we did a Let's Learn for WWF 1994, a character development for 1994. So that's a real-life uh, real in-game mod. Um, and so character development's a little bit easier there. Uh, you kind of know who the characters are. Uh, somebody suggested doing one for the Cornellverse. Uh, to kind of flesh out the roster and bring it to life a little bit. And so that's what this is. So here we are with North of the Border Pro Wrestling. Um, I've done some characters. I'm not fully done with the character development, uh, but I got our entire main event done, and uh, I think uh, maybe one or two upper mid-cards and one or two mid-carders, uh, and even one lower mid-carder, I think. Uh, regardless, uh, here we stand. So let's just jump right into it. I'm not going to kill I'm not going to waste too much time. Uh, I do want to plug... Uh, once again, and I'll plug it at the end of this as well, I do want to plug uh, the Back to the Indies um, Instagram page. Uh, I'm actually going to be sitting down with Cato this Sunday and doing a, uh, a podcast episode for Back to the Indies. Um, we'll be talking all things AEW. We're going to talk about All Out. Uh, I did see that show. It was a great show. do have quite a few opinions on that. If you're an AEW fan or an indie fan in general, uh, you're going to want to sit down and check that out. So back to the indies on Instagram. Uh, that's Kato's website. It's Max and Kato. Um, but we'll be doing our first podcast, first legitimate podcast for that uh, this Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. Now, that being said, let's jump right into it. I don't want to waste too much time. I don't want this to be a huge, super long episode. Um, but uh, let's go right into it. So um, what I do have, let's pull it up here. So here is our character development, right? This is what I use... Uh, if you watched the Let's Learn on Character Development, it is the exact same sheet, same exact format. Uh, you have each one of your guys here uh, with a little bit of a description of their personality and what motivates them, and then their short-term and long-term goals. Uh, we'll jump right into it. I don't have many. Uh, it's only less than two pages. Yeah, it's about two pages worth, um, so I'll just read through all of them. We'll talk about each one, okay? Um, in the Cornell verse, this is important because... Uh, all you have in the C-verse to go off of, uh, you've got your, let's see, Dwayne Stoney. So you've just got this. That's all you have. Um, you know, you have your, um, you have your, your basic uh, biography. Um, I like to open up their profile, check out their employment history, see where they've worked. Um, and then I go into their title history and I see what kind of, uh, what they've won, right? So... Uh, if you're Dwayne Stone here, I want to go in and notice that, okay, he's a two-time Canadian champion, 2014 to 2015. Uh, so in-game, it hasn't been that long. It's, 
it's it's been fairly he was a champion fairly recently December of 2015 I think he just lost it actually um uh he did win the burning junior championship uh in uh in burning heart of the wrestling gods and he won the best of the super juniors in 2017 in 27 2007 so that gives me is a three-time Ed Henson tag cup winner it gives me just a little bit of a background on who he is uh, and where he stands, Hall of Immortals, where he came from, what his power ranking is, end of the year awards he's won, and that's going to help shape his personality. That's going to help me shape his character. Uh, that's going to help me shape uh, what motivates him. Um, the easy one here, Dwayne is 90% towards becoming a Hall of Immortals inductee. Uh, and so you'll notice, boom, long-term goal, make the Hall of Immortals. Okay? Um, so what I've... Uh, what I've what I've done for him, I've given him kind of a kind of a, a, a maybe like a teacher gimmick sort of not a gimmick but his like his we're not talking kayfabe here right so kayfabe is going to play into it a little bit um, but we're talking what's actually motivating him both kayfabe and behind the scenes right so for Dwayne uh, we just go with upon returning to North of the Border in 2012 Dwayne has focused his attention on the good of the company. He's expressed a desire to work primarily with younger talent in an effort to build the new main event scene. Recognizing that the main event is full of older workers in their 40s, Dwayne wants to ensure the continued success of the company by building up and putting over younger talent. Uh, so his short-term goal is to build the new main event. His long-term goal is to make the Hall of Immortals. Uh, pretty simple, and it makes sense for Dwayne, right? Dwayne is, what is he, 41? How old is Dwayne here? Yeah, Dwayne's 41. Uh, been a 23-year vet. Uh, he's still number 13 on the Power 500. He's still a main eventer. He can still go 80 chain, 78 mats, 72 submission, 100 basics, 94 psychology. So Dwayne is still uh, still a guy. Um, also, I should say what I said. What I like to do also is just put a little bit of uh, in parentheses here sometimes. Uh, is kind of like a real-life guy. Uh, a real life worker that that this worker kind of reminds me of that I can kind of base my um, base my uh, um, my character kind of thing on um, just based on what who he reminds me of. Dwayne reminds me of Bret Hart when I look at his stats. Uh, not a good mic guy. Not really a great promo. Uh, not a whole lot of charisma. Uh, he Dwayne has actually less star quality than I think a Bret Hart would have. Um, but his in-ring ability, uh, is very reminiscent of a Bret Hart. Uh, so I consider him to be similar to Bret Hart. Not a carbon copy of Bret, right? Dwayne is not a carbon copy of Bret Hart. Bret was a better brawler. Bret had some, you know, better, more star quality, I think. Um, but the point is, uh, in terms of what type of worker this guy is, mostly in terms of his promo skills, uh, Dwayne is a guy really good in the ring, gonna put on great matches, but it's probably not going to get you great ratings on the microphone. And that's Bret Hart. Uh, and so uh, just in-ring-wise, he reminds me of Bret Hart. And that's what I'm talking about here, in-ring. I'm not talking about personality or anything like that. I'm talking about, as a worker, in-ring and a promo, who do these guys remind me of, right? And maybe they don't remind me of anybody. Maybe they are specific to themselves. They are kind of themselves, right? And that's fine. But... Uh, Picking a real-life character, a historical character, or a modern-day guy, just to kind of base how you would book this guy, uh, I feel like that helps a little bit for me. may not help for you. Uh, you may decide not to do that, but I, I, I do. Um, and then you give them a goal, right? You give them a personality type. Give them a personality type and a goal. Um, Dwayne, it makes sense, right? This is his family company. He, it would make sense that he wants to see this uh, succeed and continue as a strong promotion, right? What do you need for that? You need a strong main event scene. Uh, North of the Border has it right now, but it's very old. Dwayne would recognize that. The Stone family as a whole would recognize that and recognize the need to start building younger workers into that main event scene. Uh, and so that's what Dwayne is going to do, right? Um, uh, okay. So I got some popcorn stuck in my teeth here. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne is going to recognize that, and that's what his goal is going to be. Uh, in the short term, he wants to build the new main event. Doesn't mean he's just going to come out and start losing to mid-card young guys. Uh, but it does mean that he's going to 
we're going to try and get him somebody to take under his wing, right? Maybe he he's going to win a feud against a young guy, but he's going to go he's going to give that young guy a little bit of a rub, right? He's going to make that young guy look good. He's going to take that young guy under his wing. Maybe he tags with a with a younger worker uh, in the Ed Henson Cup uh, two months from now. Uh, so just things like that. His short term goal is to build that new main event, but his long term goal is still to make the Hall of Immortals, and he's ninety percent there. So he may need another run with the world title, or he may need um, a King of Kings victory, a tournament. We'll talk about the King of Kings when we do our creative meeting. Uh, but he may need a major tournament victory or another title run or, or something else uh, that's going to get him over that hump. So while he is looking out for the good of the company, uh, and he wants to build the new main event, he wants to put on good matches with younger workers and put them over, he does have a self uh, not a self-absorbed, but he does have a, a singular goal long-term in mind. He wants to make the Hall of Immortals. He wants to be a professional wrestling Hall of Famer. Um, you know, and so that's going to also shape the way he acts and the way he behaves and the storylines we put him in. And ultimately, that's what this character development is for. It's for us to get a better feel for the worker um, and sort of naturally build storylines and naturally build rivalries based on the goals that we think these guys would be going after. Um, moving on to Johnny Bloodstone. So like, uh, like Stone, Johnny's at the end of his career and wants to see the company he's been with for over a decade rise to new heights. He is requested specifically to move to the junior heavyweight division when it begins. Johnny is a true locker room leader and wants to use his popularity and experience to establish the, heavy, the junior heavyweight division. His short-term goal is to win the juniors title. His long-term goal is to establish the juniors as main eventers themselves. Okay, so in our last episode, we talked about how, um, you know, Victoria Stone, McFly, and, and Jeremy Stone, they got this idea to build a junior heavyweight division, right? But they want that junior heavyweight division to be able to main event any, any show. They want them to be just as important as the heavyweights, just a junior heavyweight, right? Uh, and Johnny Bloodstone is going to take that on. He's going to spearhead that. He says, you know what? I'm on board with this. I'm towards the end of my career. I've had a good long career. Um, I believe he's actually in time decline, so that plays a part into it. Uh, chemistry. We want our creative meeting. Um, so in time decline. No, he's not. So Johnny Bliss is not. Dwayne Stone is. I should go back to Dwayne for a second. This is also one of the reasons that will give Dwayne that gimmick of, or that, that personality trait that he wants to help younger guys. Because he sees himself starting to fade, starting in-ring ability-wise starting to go down, he realizes that he's not going to be able to carry the company much longer. Uh, and so he's, he's volunteering for that. Johnny Bloodstone, on the other hand, he's not volunteering to put over young workers. He's volunteering to get the junior heavyweight division over. Right? So if we go to Johnny, we go to Johnny Bloodstone, and we pull up his profile, uh, he is a middleweight. As we talked about in the last one, the, the, the idea would be for middleweights and below, to, for middleweight to be that class that can go either way. So middleweights can be a heavyweight or a lightweight, a uh, junior heavyweight rather. Um, and Johnny is, Johnny's a middleweight, so Johnny's going to decide, you know what, I'll bump down because I'm not really in that, the world title picture right now. I'll bump down uh, and, and get that junior heavyweight division over, right? He's a three-time Canadian champion. But it's been about three years since he was since he won that title. Um, only fifteen percent towards becoming a Hall of Immortals inductee, so that's not really a goal that he would want, right? He's gonna he he would recognize that. All right, I've been a really good worker, uh, arguably the best submission you know wrestler in history, arguably. Um, but uh, you know, but I'm not a I'm not a Hall of Fame kind of guy. I'm not a Hall of Immortals guy. Uh, I've been north of the borders, one of their most consistent workers, a three-time champion, um, you know, decent charisma and microphone, not much star quality there, sort of like Dwayne, um, you know, but not, you know, the, the Hall of Immortals isn't in the future for Johnny Bloodstone, so that's out as a goal. So what can he do? You know what? As a legacy, at 40 years old, Johnny's going to drop down, and he's going to go, and he's going to get over in that junior heavyweight division. He's going to get that title belt over, right? He's going to make it, he's going to make that title just as important. And, and he's going to, you know, him dropping down immediately lends credibility to that title. Because here's a former heavyweight champion 
volunteering to drop down into that tournament and into that into that that bracket, right? Uh, also, having him down there is going to help. I mean, with his popularity being an 82, uh, a lot of the guys that we're bringing in for that division are very, very low in popularity, right? Johnny Bloodstone's the kind of guy who can go down into that initial tournament, probably going to win it, right? He'll probably be the first ever, uh, you know, junior heavyweight champion, and that's fine. Um, you know, but in doing so, he's going to be building all those other guys, uh, building all those other guys up into the main event talents that that the company wants them to be. Um, so that's his uh, that's his goal there, right? His goal is to win the junior title, and his long term goal is to establish them as main eventers. Okay, uh, pretty simple, right? And again, it, this isn't something that is going to be this. Just having this here, it doesn't mean that in game I'm going to have Johnny cut a promo that says. I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to establish it as a main event thing, and I want to win that title. No, it, it, that's not going to be part of a story, but it's just to help you remember that, okay, at a character, that's what this guy wants to do, right? He has, a, he has an out-of-character motivation, and he's going to come up with some ideas in character to feed that, Um and it's just to help you kind of think of, you know, we still have to come up with a reason why Johnny Bloodstone's going down into that tournament, right? Uh, we want him, we're sending him down so that he can elevate it, right? We're sending him down so that he can bring it up, right? Because everyone, look, you have a junior heavyweight to title. Everybody understands that the junior heavyweights are at a lower level than the heavyweights, right? We don't want that. We want it to be truly equal. Even in New Japan, where the junior heavyweight title is prestigious, it's not the heavyweight title, right? And you're never really going to get past that. The heavyweight is always going to be where the money is, right? Um, but so out of character, we, we know why we're sending him down there. We're sending him down, so or he's volunteering to go down so that he can bring it up. But in character, he still needs a reason for why he's getting involved in that. I don't know why we have Bye Bye Baby here. Dismiss that. Um, but... Uh, so yeah, so we still have to come up with a reason for him to be down there. And we'll do that when we do our storyline development and our, you know, fleshing all that stuff out. Um, we'll, we'll do all that stuff. Um, but this is just for developing that character, right? And then when we go to build our storylines, we can base our storylines off the character development. Um, you know, I'm assuming everybody's followed that. If you're not following that, leave a comment. Uh, and, I'll, and I, you know, I read the comments, I answer them. Uh, you know, if you're not really following the difference between building a character development and building a storyline, you know, in character, out of character, whatever, you know, let me know. Drop a comment. We'll, I'll clarify. Um, we'll move on to Owen Love. Owen's been with the company since his graduation from the House of Stone Academy in 2001. He has essentially been in the tag division his entire career with The Natural, and he's perfectly fine with that. A three-time Henson Cup winner and two-time tag team champion, Owen Love, along with his partner, The Natural, are shooting for one final long run with the tag team titles to solidify themselves as the best tag team in North of the Border history. Uh, his short-term goal, win and then have a long run with the tag titles. His long-term goal is to make the North of the Border Hall of Fame. Uh, Owen is North of the Border. Uh, he's been here, and this is why it's important to check the employment history. North of the Border, 2001 of the present. So for 15 years, you know, 14, 15 years, he's been north of the border pro wrestling. Um, he's 41. He's going to retire here, most likely. Uh, you know, and, you know, title history-wise, he won the Unlimited Action title. I don't really know what that is. Um, it's a retired title, obviously, but I don't know what the... I don't really know what the, um, what the gimmick was on it. 20% uh, towards the Hall of Immortals. Um, so... Probably not going to happen. Almost certainly not going to happen. Um, but three-time Henson Cup winner, two-time tag team champion. You know, this guy with the natural, this is... I mean, he is he is north of the border tag team. I mean, that's what he is. He is north of the border tag team wrestling. He is the epitome of it. Uh, and he wants one more long run uh, with that title. Um, he had it in 2007. They had it in 2008. And then back in 2015, they won the tag team cup. Uh, and then um, almost a year-long run with the tag titles from 06 to 07. And then 
what is that, like a 6th of July, August, September, October, almost a year-long run with the tag team titles in 08 and 09. Has not won a tag team championship since 2009. So we're going on seven years now without a tag team title. Uh, and so him and The Natural, they're going to be looking to win those titles one more time and have a good, long, lengthy run before putting over somebody on their way out. Um, Owen, I believe The Natural is in time decline. So Owen Love is not, but The Natural is, uh, and it shows. He's seven years past his prime, 44 years old. Uh, he's been in time decline for quite some time, and the word retirement must have crossed his mind. So if we're going to do this, we need to do it soon, because The Natural is not really, he's not really cutting it anymore, right? So Owen wants one more long title run. Uh, we haven't done a character development for The Natural, uh, he might not want another long run, you know, and maybe we get a storyline out of that. So maybe the natural feels like, you know, eh, you know what, I'm past my prime. I just don't have it in me anymore. I don't feel like I can carry the belts for another year. Um, you know, you know, maybe he has then maybe he wants to retire. Maybe he don't, he wants to go. He doesn't want to be, you know, in the spotlight anymore. That might be a storyline right there. We might get one final storyline between Owen Love and the natural, as a tag team breakup storyline to give them a singles, a singles, you know, storyline. Um, you know, you look at, at his, uh, so he's, he did win the television championship once, 20% to the all. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to give him a breakup storyline. Maybe you don't. They've been together for 14 years. Um, you know, Owen, yeah, I mean, so uh, The Natural's been here since 2004, uh, but it says he's been a 26-year pro, so I don't really know how that makes sense. Either way, um, you know, they've both been, um, they've both been, uh, you know, a tag team their whole career, essentially. Um, you know, does it make sense to break them up? I don't know. We'll figure that out when we do a character development for The Natural. Um, but... But so that's where that's where where um, where Owen Love stands, and it's perfectly fine. Not everyone has to want the world title. You ca you can't you can't give everyone that goal, right? Um, and in real life, realistically, guys would understand that. You know, they might want to be the world champ, but they're going to set realistic goals for themselves. Owen Love may want yeah, maybe he wanted to run with the world title, but he's forty years old now. He's been a tag team his whole career. The main event scene is kind of stacked. He's going to recognize okay, that's probably not going to happen. So let me set a, a, a more realistic goal. Right. Uh, Sean McFly. Uh, the word retirement has been thrown around regarding pretty much everyone in the North of the Border main event scene. Sean McFly, however, still believes he has a lot left in the tank. As the dreaded time decline hits his co-workers around him, McFly has shown no signs of slowing down. He's still putting on great matches and intends on continuing as long as he can. It's been a long time since McFly won Wrestler of the Year, and he wants it one last time to prove he's still the best in the world. His short-term goal, win the 2016 Wrestler of the Year. Long-term goal, none. It's okay, we talked about this in our last character development, it's okay to not have a long-term goal. It's okay to not have a short-term goal. It's okay to not have any goals. You just don't want to overdo that, right? It's okay to have a guy with no goals, you know? And maybe that's part, maybe that's his gimmick. He's just kind of floating around, or maybe he just likes to hurt people. Right? He doesn't have any goals, just wants to fight. That's fine. Right? For McFly, given his age, he doesn't really need a long-term goal. He's 41 years old. He doesn't really need a long-term goal. Uh, because given his age, you know, I mean he's done it all, right? He's been, I mean, look at his you look at his, his title history, you know, he's a two-time SWF heavyweight champ, he's a five-time North of the Border champ. I'm going to get rid of the Canadian and just make that the North of the Border champion. Um, I may introduce a, a mid-card heavyweight belt called the Canadian title. I don't know. Uh, I don't like the idea of a North of the Border Canadian champion. Uh, I may change that to national champion. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but for now, I just kind of call it the North of the Border champ. But he's a five-time North of the Border champ. Hasn't won it since 2013. Uh, he's a definite Hall of Immortals inductee, so there's no long-term goal there. Uh, he's a two-time wrestler of the year. Uh, hasn't won it since 02. Uh, and so I figured, you know what? Maybe Sean would want that. Maybe Sean McFly, his numbers are still fantastic. Uh, 67 brawl, 74 chain, 81 mat, 78 submission, 100 on the basics, 97 psychology. 
You know, his stamina is still an 81. Uh, he's not in time decline. Um, you know, still plays a great baby face. Um, you know, why wouldn't his goal, the most logical goal for him, would be to prove he's still got it and win Wrestler of the Year. You know, so while while Dwayne wants to help the company, he wants to put guys over, uh, Sean wants to show that he can still do it. That 41 is nothing for him. He's just hitting his stride at 41 years old. Maybe he wins another title. Uh, but for him, it's just he wants to win the wrestler of the year. Now, the cool thing about this goal and creating goals like this is it makes it a lot easier for me, and likewise then for you when you start doing this, uh, it makes it a lot easier to... Um, to come up with direction for each guy, right? So Sean McFly, he wants to win Wrestler of the Year. Well, how do you do that? You put on the best matches throughout the course of the year. That's literally how the game uh, decides that, is who put on the best, you know, cumulative ratings, right? Who had the best matches? Uh, and so it, it, it sort of writes itself in terms of, okay, who do I want McFly to be going up against, right? I want McFly to... You know, now this this in and of itself, to win the wrestler of the year, that's gonna probably be a storyline for McFly. He's pro I'm probably gonna have him cut a promo, uh, and he's not a great promo, not a, not even a good promo, uh, but I'll probably have him cut a promo that says exactly that. Whereas in the case of Frankie Perez, we didn't want to say that, right? We didn't want to say what his goal was. For Sean, we can, and the reason for that is because he's babyface. And his goal is to win wrestler of the year because he's getting up there in age and he wants to show he's still got it. Well, that's a babyface promo, right? It honestly builds a story right there. Babyface promo, right? He wants to win 2016 wrestler of the year. He wants to show the fans that he's still got it. He wants to show everybody that he's not going anywhere. He is north of the border. Uh, he's here. He's still the best in the world. Um, you know, and then we pick a heel. Pick a heel to come out and be his first challenger, right? Now... What it does build is that that heel has to also be capable of putting on good matches. Why? Because we're trying to get this for him, right? Not everyone has to get their goal. You don't even have to, you as the booker can decide, okay, yeah, that's what his goal is, but I'm not going to give it to him. Uh, the goal is simply there for di to direct the character in the direction you want him to go. You decide, okay, this guy's going to get his goal, this guy's not. Uh, for me, this seems like a challenge. Right? And it seems like a challenge that would add enjoyment to the game. Uh, so I'm going to try and do it. So it, his goal just became my goal as well. So my goal over the next year is to put Sean McFly in the position to put on great matches and win that award. Uh, it adds a little bit of an extra reason to be playing for me now. Because now it's my goal. Right Now I have something to actually play for. Uh, I'm not just booking the, re the show to try and make money. I'm not booking it to try and win a national battle or become, you know, grow in size. I actually have a game within the game. Um, you know, you don't always have to do that. So like this one here, have a long run with the tag titles. Maybe I don't give that to Owen. Maybe I decide, you know what, the better story is he wants another long run, but the natural doesn't. And so Owen has to either find a new partner or we get a tag team we get a tag team breakup storyline at the end of their career, and he doesn't get this. Who knows? That's possible, right? Uh, you don't have to give it to them. That's just to give, you know, his motivation, Owen's motivation. Maybe Owen, you know, his motivation is, yeah, I want to win that, you know, but he struggles to get it, and it just can't, and that's, that's the story, right? This is more to assist in storylines, but don't forget, you can use these goals as your own goals, Right? It's like Dwayne Stone, build the new main event. That's my goal. I want to do that because I want my company to succeed. So I'm using Dwayne as like a, yeah, that's his goal, but it's really my goal. He's the pawn, right? Same thing with Johnny Bloodstone. I want to establish my juniors as main eventers. Well, Johnny is the best way to do that. I see, right? So that's my goal. Now my goal is also to get Sean McFly to win wrestler of the year. So I have three goals in game already, you know, that are above, uh, you know, that have nothing to do with, with just making money or, or, or succeeding as a company, right? Um, I have additional goals now that just kind of be a game within a game that make things a little easier for me to book. Uh, we'll move on to Steve DeColt. Gold. That's it. Steve DeColt is the best in the biz. Just ask him. And the only thing on his mind is championship gold. 
Steve wants to be the number one worker in the world and go down in the Hall of Immortals as the greatest to ever do it. Okay? His goal is to win the world title. His long-term goal is to make the Hall of Immortals. Let's pull him up. Steve DeColt, view the profile. Title history. 70% towards becoming a Hall of Immortals inductee. Uh, he was the number 7 ranked 2015 Power 500. So, uh, Steve DeColt's got the egomaniac gimmick. Uh, and so, you know, the goal, for me, I looked at it and said, this guy can still do it. He's not in time to climb. He's 42, but he's still got it. Uh, he's actually, you know, he's, he's a better brawler, but actually not even as good as, as McFly is. Um, but uh, Steve wants the title, right? And I want to put it on him, frankly. Uh, I'll probably put, him on, put it on him at the Clash Classic. I'll probably have him, I'll have Westy Brook successfully defend the title once, and then I'll probably put DeColt over at Clash Classic. And the reason for that is just his star quality is a 94. He's great on the mic. Um, uh, I often, um, I always compare the DeColts to the, uh, the Von Erichs and the Stones to the Hart family. That's kind of how I always, because uh, the Stones are uh, not quite as good, as, rather the DeColts, not quite as good as the Stones in ring, but blow them away on the microphone. Uh, I want DeColt to be the champ because the guy can cut a great promo, and I like promos. Um, so I've made his goal just he wants championship gold. That's it. That's his goal. That's his short-term goal, and his long-term goal is to make the Hall of Immortals, right? He does say that he wants to be the number one worker in the world. So that's sort of a sub-goal for me. I'd like him to be ranked number one in the Power 500. Probably not going to happen. Almost certainly won't happen. But it is sort of a sub-goal that I can sort of be like, yeah, I want him to win the world title, but he also has to have good matches because I want him to win that that number one kind of thing. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, very, very simple. Very simple goal. And those are okay. Simple goals are okay. Win the world title, make the Hall of Fame. That's it. That's fairly simple, right? Um, when you do simple goals like that, it does make it a little bit harder to find direction for them and find a storyline. But Steve is fairly easy to write for, and we'll get into that in our creative meetings. He's a fairly easy guy to write for. The story writes itself. He came over from north of the border. We have a contract out to Ricky DeColt. He could team with Ricky, or he could feud with Ricky. You know, Ricky could, could say, oh, well, you know, you know, Ricky could come in and as the babyface and hold it against Steve for leaving CGC, or he could come in as the heel and join Steve DeColt. Uh, I want to do kind of like a four horsemen gimmick. I don't know who I'm going to give that to. Uh, but I do want to do a four-man stable with a four horsemen. Could be Steve and Ricky. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it's okay to do simple goals. It just makes it a little bit harder to direct the guys. But if you've got somebody like Steve who's kind of easy to write for and cuts really good promos, then that's the kind of guy I would give a simpler gimmick to, a simpler goal to. Uh, Tim Westybrook. After a long wait, Tim finally reached the pinnacle of North of the Border. Now his goal is to prove he belongs there. Tim's thankful for everything the North of the Border fans have done for him over the years and for the way they stuck behind him on this run. His goal now is to put on great matches and be the champion they deserve. He has one goal. He doesn't have a long-term goal. His goal is to put on at least an 80-rated match every time he goes out. That's not going to be super easy for me because he's not a great in-ring worker. He does have good basics. He's a decent brawler. Um... He's got great stamina, 95 stamina. So for a big guy, um, you know, he's he's reminiscent. I mean, his menace is a 78. Star quality is an 82. He's reminiscent a little bit of a Brock Lesnar, but not nearly as good a wrestler as Brock Lesnar. Um, but I want to put him with guys, while he's the champ, I want to put him with guys that are going to get those good ratings out of him. I mean, his popularity is a 78. Not great, but not bad by any means. Uh, I want him to have a good... Look, he's a transitional champion. I think everybody knows that, right? He's not a great world champion. But while he is the champ, in those two months, I want him to have a good, strong reign, right? I want to put him in a position to, to put on at least an 80 every time he goes out. And that's going to help me decide who to pair him with. I already know that I have to pair him with strong workers to make him look better than he actually is because uh, I don't want the prestige of my title to go down. Um... But it also helps to come up and think, okay, I want to get him at least an 80 every time. That's the goal. So I got to put him with guys who can get him there. You know, for the next two months, Steve DeColt, that's good. That's great. Uh, maybe Sean McFly can pull a good match out of him, whatever. 
But that's a simple goal. Um, you know, he's only going to get a short title reign. I'm, I know that. I know for a fact at Clash Classic he's going to lose. I'm thinking it's going to be to Steve DeColt. Haven't really made up my mind yet. Um, but he's going to drop the title at Clash Classic. Um, in between now and then, this is the goal. Get those matches up, put on those 80-rated matches, and have a good, even though it's short, uh, enjoy that title reign. Enjoy it with the fans. Be that true baby face that he is. Because he is. I mean, he plays an 89 baby face, a 67 heel. So he's a way better baby face. Um, and I want him to enjoy this short title reign with those fans. That's going to be the whole gimmick. Um, we got a couple more here. Sean Dealey. Uh, after spending a significant portion of his career across the street in CGC, Sean Dealey has come to North of the Border for one reason. To prove that he is the best pure wrestler in the world. Sean feels that North of the Border is the home of the world's best in-ring performers, and he wants to cement himself within that group. Two goals for him, short term. Have the highest cumulative match ratings in the company. So we're going to track the match ratings as we go along. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be time-consuming, but I really want to do it. Uh, we're going to track who scored what on the ratings. Uh, over the next year, Sean Dealey wants to be the highest. We're going to add them all together. He wants to be the highest. He wants to have the highest cumulative match ratings, which would be an indicator that he is the best wrestler in the company and one of the best wrestlers in the world, right? Um, maybe that maybe that's win wrestler of the year. Uh, you know, it's not one of his goals, but it could be a sub goal. Um, you know, but long term goal win the North of the Border title. So long term goal long term goal is sort of long term in terms of however you perceive long term, right? Long term could be a year. Or it could be five years. In this case, it's probably like a three-year thing. So because his short-term goal is a one-year thing, his long-term is going to get pushed back a little more, right? Maybe to two or three years. So within the next two or three years, he wants to win that title. Good news for Dealey, he's only 30 years old. So even if it takes him three years, he's still 33. He's at right in the prime of his career. Great time to be there. Now, this also means that Sean Dealey might be the perfect opponent for Dwayne Stone, who's trying to build up that main event scene, right? So Sean Dealey's an upper mid Carter. His popularity is a 70. He probably doesn't actually doesn't need that rub. Um, but Dwayne's popularity, an 82, a victory there would, would certainly help. Now, they're both baby faces, so that adds a little bit of confusion to it. But it's a possibility, right? Not It doesn't have to be a guarantee, but it's a possibility. Uh, he's also a toned middleweight. So there's a couple things we could do with, with Dealey. I like him in the heavyweight division, but he could theoretically go down to that, that junior heavyweight division for a little while. Uh, if we're not using him in the main event in the heavyweight scene right now, we could drop him down there. Him and Johnny Bloodstone, Johnny's a, ba Johnny's a heel, I think, right? Johnny's a heel. So him and Johnny Bloodstone could be the final two in that junior heavyweight tournament. And um, and Sean could go over. You know, that would give Sean... He's an 82 as well. That gives Sean a decent rub. It still puts that title, that junior heavyweight title, in a, in a good position. Um, but that's not necessarily Sean's goal. Sean wants to win the North of the Border heavyweight title. So he might see it as a possibility, okay, I'll, I'll do that for a year and then bump up. But it's not necessarily where he really wants to be going. And if we're going to give them goals, we do have to take that into consideration when we're booking them, right? It's a role play kind of thing. Like, would he really be happy about this? And sometimes he might not care. Well, I don't care if he's unhappy. You know, I don't care if it's not really exactly what he wants. We're going to use it to build to what he wants, right? You also may not be building to what he wants. You may not want to put the North of the Border title on him. I do. I know that I do, but just not for another year or two, maybe another three years, right? Um, but his goal is to have high match ratings, right, and establish himself as the best pure wrestler in the world. Uh, he's been a CGC champ. He wants to be the North of the Border champ, but, it's, but mainly he wants to establish himself as, as the, you know, the best wrestler, wrestler in the world. Uh, he's actually not bad on the mic. 69 charisma, 63. Star quality, only a 66. So I want to... Oh, that's Johnny Bloodstone. I'm sorry. Sean Dealey, even worse on the mic. Uh, so a 65 star quality, 58, 56. So I want to compare him to Kurt Angle, but that's an unfair comparison, right? 
I almost feel like a more fair comparison might be like a Chad Gable, but he's not even as good as Chad. As Chad, excuse me, I'm burping over here. Not even really as good as Chad is on the mic. Um, you know, maybe a Shelton Benjamin. Uh, I don't really know exactly where. I mean, maybe an Owen Hart. You know, Owen was pro Owen was actually much better. He could be another Bret Hart type guy. Uh, I love Sean Dealey though, by the way. Super well rounded, sixty one brawl, all seventies in the in the mat wrestling, uh, eighty four in a stamina. This guy's gonna be one of my world champions. Um, but I don't even know who to compare him to, so I'm gonna leave it blank, right? Um, Tim Westybrook, poor man's Lesnar. That's just kind of a thing, just to remind me how I want to book him. He's a poor man's Brock Lesnar, right? Mighty Kavanaugh. Mighty Danny Kavanaugh. Uh, I'm probably going to start calling him Mighty Danny Kavanaugh because I don't like the idea of Mighty Kavanaugh. Uh, north of the border tends to run a little bit more realistic, so I like to use real names. Uh, so I may just go, you know, Mighty Danny Kavanaugh. Danny Kavanaugh, you know, whatever. But Danny has the look and the charisma to be the top dog. But in a place like North of the Border, his lackluster in-ring ability has hampered his rise. Danny has made it his goal to work with the veterans to try to improve his in-ring ability to a point where he could be considered a real asset. So his short-term goal is to work with veteran technical workers. Long-term, improve his basics to 85, brawling to 70, and psychology to 80. Let's check out Mighty Kavanaugh. So we want to improve his... Let me see here. So we want to... Here we go. We want to improve his basics to 85. Right now, his basics are 77. That's no problem, right? He actually he actually does have a, a decent, solid base uh, that we're working with. Um, uh, he wants to improve his brawling to a 70. Right now, it's a 54, so we got to go up about 16 points in that. May or may not happen, I don't know. And his psychology to an 80, so 11 points. A lot of that is kind of luck of the roll, right? Uh, I don't really know how high I can get his brawling skill. I don't really know how high I can raise his psychology. I don't know if his basics can go up. But I'm going to do my best to try, right? And I'm going to do my best to try because his star quality is an 80. Uh, he's actually pretty good on the mic. By, by north of the border standards, he's really good on the mic. 71 charisma, 65 microphone. So, you know, by north of the border standards, he's a very good mic guy. Um... And he's got the look, man. 80 star quality, 74 menace. Um, you know, I'd like to eventually run a storyline maybe where where Mighty Kavanaugh turns on, on Tim Westybrook and turns heel. So his popularity is a 69. Tim's is a 78. So I could do a storyline where, where Iron Might, which is Westybrook and Kavanaugh, they enter the Ed Henson tournament. And over the course of that tournament... Mighty turns on Westybrook, and now we get a storyline there, you know, because Westybrook's a little older, he's in time decline, where we can put Mighty, we can put Danny over Tim. Um, you know, and that would certainly help improve uh, the brawling, you know, aspect, so you could put Westybrook and, and Kavanaugh and try and get that brawling up. It's not going to be a very good feud, though. Uh, could get the psychology up, could get his basics up. Uh, more realistically, we're looking to put Kavanaugh in the ring with somebody like a McFly or, or a Bloodstone or Stone or somebody uh, that he can actually work with to improve his basics and improve his brawling. So that's the kind of the goal. Long-term goal. And again, it's more of a goal for me even, right? His goal is kind of my goal. I want to improve, the, I want to improve Kavanaugh. If I can make him a, a, a decent worker, then he can be an asset to the company. If I can't make him a decent worker, he's never going to be an asset. He's always going to be relegated to, like, that bodyguard role. Um, we move on to Cameron Vesey. We just got three more here. Uh, Cameron Vesey, son of the legendary Larry Vesey. Cameron has the potential to be the best to ever do it. He was quick to win the TV title and now wants to solidify his position by having a long, lengthy run with the title before catapulting to the top. Cameron Vesey, to me is one Randall Orton. Uh, he reminds me of Randy Orton a lot. Even the way he kind of looks, even the way he looks, uh, you know, second generation superstar, you know, high on the star quality, good charisma, good microphone skills, good stamina, in-ring work is coming along. Um, you know, he's got the blue chipper gimmick 
Works a great heel. Uh, pretty good baby face, too, but a great heel. Good cocky gimmick. Legit. He just screams Randy Orton to me. And so I tend to base his character off Randy Orton. Um, he's been a big hit. North of the Border sees him as a future world champ. He's already a 60 popularity at 28 years old. Uh, championship history. So big, uh, big in the Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic champion for almost a year. He's a two-time television champion. Um, he's made five defenses so far. far. Two-time Ripcord Invitational Championship winner. Uh, One-time Sam Keith Classic. Um, this is a guy, I want him. His first TV title reign, how long was it? His first TV title reign went from October 2014 to May of 2015. So what's October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May? About seven months. Um, I want this TV title reign. He picked it up in August of 2015. I want it to be at least a year. So I want him to hold this belt for at least another eight months, uh, maybe even longer, uh, just kind of beating everyone in his path until somebody finally beats him. Having decided how I want to work the TV title, do I want it to be defended every episode of TV? Uh, do I want to treat it more like an intercontinental mid-card belt? I'm not really sure. Ordinarily, I like the TV titles to be defended on TV every week. Uh, and we will certainly be defending it on TV. Just haven't decided if I want to do it every week. Um, I'm just worried that I'll run through every competitor too quickly uh, if I do it to be defended every week. Um, but he's a good promo man, um, good mic guy, uh, which is really why I want to keep that TV title on him for a while because he can cut a good promo. He can fill, fill some, some minutes on the TV. Um... But he wants to become the top guy in the business. So his short-term goal, elevate that TV title, right? So immediately I have a little bit of guidance here, right? I'm going to give him a good long run, uh, get the prestige of that TV title up. In the long term, he wants to become the number one guy. He wants to oust Tommy Cornell as the number one on the Power 500. And I really think he's going to do it. Uh, I really think Cameron Vesey has the potential to be that guy and to really be that good. Um, I'm going to try and... Buzz through these last ones here because we're about a half hour here. So I'm going to try and buzz through this here. Uh, Eric Strong. Strong's been a reliable mid-carder for a while now with talk of a junior heavyweight division making its way into the north of the border. Strong sees an opportunity to do more. He set his sights on that division and has the potential and the willpower to headline it for years. Uh, he wants to win the junior heavyweight title in the short term. And in the long term, he wants to help establish the junior division. So Eric Strong kind of, he's a realist, right? He kind of realizes... That he's too small. He's a lightweight. Uh, he's too small to really be a, a top heavyweight, even with an underdog gimmick that you want to root for. Um, but all his other stuff, I mean, good charisma. He's got 79 star quality. You know, uh, 81 on the sex appeal. Uh, good selling, good consistency, good psychology, good basics, good chain wrestling. The stuff, the, the stuff is there. But... Being a smaller guy, can you believe him as a heavyweight champ? He kind of feels almost to me like a Rey Mysterio kind of guy where, you know, or even, you know, maybe a Daniel Bryan where later in his career he just, you know, if, if the fans get behind him, you kind of force, your, you, you kind of end up in a position where you're forced to give him a run. Uh, but for now, you know, he strikes me as a guy who, who would want to run that light heavyweight division who would just see it as an opportunity, see it as a real opportunity. Uh, you know, he is a two-time Mid-Atlantic champion. Um, you know, I think, but I think he would look at this as an opportunity to really establish himself in this company as a top-tier worker, just a little bit smaller. Um, you know, now, he wants to win the junior heavyweight title. So does... So does Johnny Bloodstone. Maybe we get a storyline where those two meet in the finals and maybe Bloodstone beats him. Now we get a storyline between Bloodstone and Strong. Even if Johnny wins, what does that do for Eric Strong? God, that, I mean, that launches him, right? I mean, he's, he's a six, Strong, Eric Strong's a 62 popularity, whatever he was, 67, you know, compared to the 82 popularity that Bloodstone is. Working with Bloodstone is going to do wonders for a young Eric Strong. Um, and who knows, maybe, maybe Strong ends up becoming the backbone of that, that junior heavyweight division, right? Um, and finally, Frankie Perez, a relatively well-known indie worker in the United States. He's got 40s in the popularity there. 
Perez has come to North of the Border to help establish its junior heavyweight division. On a personal level, though, he's decided to come to Canada to increase his international popularity. Frankie sees it as an opportunity to make the jump from indie darling to mainstream success. Uh, his short-term goal is to raise his Canadian popularity to at least 60. It's like four right now. This is, it's non-existent. Um, his long-term goal is to establish himself as a large company mainstay. Um, he's not old, but he's not what I would call young. He's, what, 31, I think? 31. Been in the business for 13 years. Um, 41 popularity in the USA. Uh, 32 in Japan. So he's an indie guy. He's a, he's a, he's a well-known indie name, right? Um, he sort of reminds me of, of a CM Punk. Um, you know, in the fact that he was well-known in the indies until he was kind of a lot older uh, before making an actual impact somewhere. Uh, but his skills are fantastic. 74 brawling, 66 chain wrestling, 60 puro, 65 hardcore, 65 and 73 on the mat wrestling and submission. He's a 63 aerial, 72 flashes, 75 basics, only a 70 in the psychology. He's an indie guy, right? He's not a spot monkey. Psychology is less important on the indies. Um, 84 consistency, 82 stamina. Uh, you know, he's got it. 82 star quality, um, you know, and high 60s on the mic. So for North of the Border standards, he's a good mic man. Frankie has the potential to be, if he was a little bigger, he's a toned lightweight. But Frankie has the potential to be a world champion. Uh, he just, I just feel like he hasn't been discovered yet. Very reminiscent of CM Punk. And so I'm going to put it in there. CM Punk. Um... I'm going to put that in there. Uh, he's not super similar, you know, I, I, exact, but he's similar. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so, you know, so that's kind of the, the, the goal. So, yeah, he's here. He's, he's been brought in with the, you know, he's been told, hey, we're going to put you in the junior heavyweight division. That's what, that's what we want you for. We want you to help establish the junior heavyweights. And he's all for it. But on a personal level, he sees this as an opportunity to get real TV time and really show the world what he can do. If you look at his employment history, Mid-Atlantic Wrestling, Coastal Zone Wrestling, WLW, nobody with real TV deals. Um, you know, he's yet to really uh, get, be given the opportunity to show what he can do. North of the Border is going to give him that opportunity. And I'm actually curious to see how it turns out because uh, I really do believe that, that Frankie is like a hidden gem. Um, and could become a huge star for me. Huge star. Um, so, so there's that. So we're going to be bringing him in. He's, he's 221 on the Power 500 right now. I'd like to see him crack the top 100. Um, but I'm, I really am curious to see how that's, how that's going to work out. Um, but yeah, guys, so that's, that's kind of it, guys. So the, the basics of character development is make these guys your own, right? They need goals. They need motivation, Right? Uh, they need something that makes them feel alive, something that, that, that motivates them. Uh, and what you'll find will happen when you give them motivation and goals is that the stories will write themselves, right? Um, you're no longer coming up with a story idea and then finding the guys to put in it. You're looking at your guys and finding the stories for them. Uh, you know, you're looking at Eric Strong and saying, yeah, this guy's small, but he's been a champ everywhere he's gone. Um, you know, or are you looking at Frankie Perez? And I, I just, literally just wrote a story talking about how no one's given him a chance. You know, he's this great worker. He legitimately is a fantastic worker. If I put him in a match with Steve DeColt, that match would score in the 90s. It just would. Now, everyone scores that with Steve, but you get the point, right? It's not, he's not a slouch, but no one's given him a chance. He's been a pro for 14 years Nobody's given Frankie Perez a chance. And here he is finally give, being given an opportunity to be on TV and be the backbone and help establish a new division in North of the Border. And he sees this as an opportunity. You know, I'm going to finally be on TV. I'm finally going to get a chance to show the world what Frankie Perez can do. That's a freaking story, guys. That's a storyline. And it really is that simple, you know? Um... You know, Mighty Kavanaugh, uh, you know, Mighty Kavanaugh trying to improve and get better. That's a story, right? You know, Cameron Vesey, elevate the TV title. You know, he's, 
He sees himself as a blue chip prospect. He's the guy, you know, it writes itself. Um, you know, Tim Westybrook wanting to put on at least an 80 rated match. Well, yeah, because he recognizes he's not the greatest worker. And here he is, he's been given the opportunity to be the top guy in the in the company. And he, he owes it to the company, to the fans, to, to be the best that he can be. That's a story, right? Um, you know, the Sean McFly story. Everyone's talking about retirement and how the north of the border's in trouble. Their main event is super old. Everyone in that main event's 40 years or older. They're in trouble. Well, Sean says, go screw. Go pound rocks, man. I'm going to be the wrestler of the year. I'm still, the, I'm still one of the best workers in the world. You can go pound rocks, man. I'm going to win wrestler of the year. I'll show you. There's a story there. You know, it writes itself. And, and it's not even a story that I meant to come up with as I was, as you're doing it. It just, it just happens, you know? Um, you know, Owen Love wanting a long run with the tag titles. But the natural, eh, he's seven years past his prime. Maybe the natural's worried that, look, if we, we win those tag titles, I'm going to get exposed as not being as good as I used to be. Well, now Owen has a little bit of a conundrum, doesn't he? Owen's got, if, if he wants one more run, maybe he has to find a new tag team partner. You know, and maybe that breakup with, with the natural goes smooth. Maybe they're still friends. Maybe they're, they're still a team. But maybe they form a three, you know, maybe they form a three-man team. Maybe there is a, they form a stable. You know, who knows? Maybe that, maybe that four horsemen stable that I wanted to make, maybe the natural and Owen, maybe they form a stable to compete with it, right? And Owen tags with somebody else. Who knows? You know, but there's a story there. Uh, Dwayne Stone wanted to build the new main event. There's a story there, you know. So it makes it a lot easier uh, on you when you do this, when you do give them, you give them character traits, you give them motivations and goals. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to come up with those with those storylines uh, because a lot of them just write themselves. And sometimes you accidentally, like Johnny Bloodstone and Eric Strong. I didn't have a Bloodstone versus Strong storyline planned. It was the last thing on my mind. But when I wrote out their goals, you realize, oh, shit, both these guys want to win the junior title. Both of them want to establish the juniors as main eventers. Well, there's a perfect match right there. One of them's a heel, one of them's a babyface. It's already there. Awesome. Cool. We have a storyline. We have our first junior heavyweight title storyline, Bloodstone versus Strong. I'm already got, the wheels are already turning. I'm already thinking, okay, Bloodstone beats Strong in the finals of the tournament, becomes the first ever champion. And Eric Strong has to fight his way back up, reestablish himself as a challenger, challenge for that title, and win it maybe, maybe a year later. You know, there's already a story there. And it just happens. I would recommend doing character development for all your guys, right? But that's not really realistic. Like, I'm not going to do character development for everyone on my roster. Um, but I would recommend doing it for, at the very least, every one of your main eventers should have goals and motivations because they're going to be on every one of your shows. About half your upper mid-carders should have goals and motivations, right? Um, maybe a quarter of your mid-carders um, and then a handful here or there of, of other guys, right? Um, you don't have to do a paragraph for each guy, right? When I get to my mid-card and lower, I don't write any of this anymore. I don't write any of this paragraph. I just give them a short-term goal and a long-term goal or just a short-term goal or just a long-term goal. Just so that I can look at it and be like, oh, yeah, he wants to do that. Okay. I don't really have to write anything. It's just because they're not really being used all that much. They might get used twice a month, right? But they still need to act. You know, for continuity purposes, they need to act within their character, right? If I wrote a book and in chapter one, my character acted one way, and then in chapter 15, he acted a completely different way, and there was no reason for that change, you'd be like, well, what, what the hell is that? What is that about, right? Why well, this is? It's too hard to follow. That can happen in pro wrestling. It's. I mean, honestly, sometimes I feel like WWE is is making that mistake right now, where, where they just don't have the direction, right? Their guys are kind of all over the place. Um, don't let that happen. Give them a goal. Give them a motivation. They don't even need a goal. Maybe they just have a motivation, right? Maybe yeah. Let's pull this guy up. Maybe I know exactly who I'm gonna go to. Actually, let's go to Flash. Flash is 29 years old, right? He's a skinny, small dude. I mean, small, right? Um, you know, what's his goal? I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe Flash just, I don't know. Maybe he just, 
well, maybe he's maybe he just wants his motivation is, um, you know, he wants to show, uh, and you know what, his motivation is, you know, when he was getting into the business when he was younger, his you know all his friends and his family told him he was too small, so his goal is he just wants to impress his family, that's it. He wants to show them that he can do it. You know, he wants to show he wants to show his family that he can make a career as a wrestler. That's it. That's it. And you just put that in there, right? Now, I have no plans to really use Flash in a real significant way, right? Obviously, he's going to the junior heavyweight division. Uh, maybe he'll tag with Oscar Golden as a tag team. Whatever. Um, but what I want, what you, what, when you put that, you give him a motivation, it just gives you, if the time comes, it's like, you know what, I want to push Flash. There's at least a motivation there to kind of jumpstart that process of coming up with goals, right? It's just something there, um, you know. Um, you know, there, there's some sort of a motivation that that guy has, and I would recommend doing that for everybody on your roster. Come up with a motivation for everybody, uh, and it can change. You know, even if you never plan on Flash, might go two months never showing up on TV, but that goal, that motivation, that backstage motivation is still there. Right? So when I do decide to put him on TV, I can put like, all right, what is this guy doing? Oh, yeah, he wants to impress his family. All right, cool. You know, um, you know, the Mountie man. Maybe he just, maybe he just wants to show that he can get a Mountie gimmick over. Right? That's his, that's his name. He's a lower main cutter, but he wants to get the Mountie gimmick over. And that's in there. And I may never come back to it, but it's there. Right? It's just there just for, you know, just in case you decide you want to push him. You know? Um, I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. If, if you have any questions, definitely put a comment in there. I definitely want to hear them. I definitely want to answer them. Um, if you have suggestions of your own, put them in the comment section. Uh, this is, you know, obviously this is kind of my, a little bit of a let's learn thing, but it's kind of an open discussion, right? Put them in the comments. Let me know if you got suggestions. Uh, is there something that you do uh, with your character development? Because believe me, I am not a, I'm not an expert on this game, right? I'm not an expert on building characters so just like yeah, as much as you're listening to this for 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 ideas i want your ideas too i'm always up to listening oh wow this guy does that you know that's genius he uses this oh my god that's perfect you know something like you know you never know uh so guys i really thanks for dropping in uh i really think that's gonna be it that's what i got uh, that's what i got for character development maybe we'll come back to this at some point once i've fleshed out everybody uh maybe not uh i hope you got something out of this um, I hope you come back. I hope you click that subscribe button. Um, but if not, whatever, who needs you? Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for us guys tonight. Thanks for stopping by. If you listen to this on your lunch break, I appreciate it. Get back to work, get out of the car, get out of the house, go take a walk. Enjoy the beautiful weather. It's not beautiful. It's raining over here right now. Uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping by guys. I will see you when I see you. That's going to do it. Get on out there. Develop those characters. Get into your game. Be a nerd about it. Get to know your wrestlers. Get to know your workers. Screw everybody else. Use your imagination. Have fun with it, guys. I will see you when I see you.